Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Today we'll be looking at a data set of customer churn rates. Well, it will be a data set of different customers and we'll be trying to predict the churn rate uh, based on a series of attributes. And it is for Telco. So let's get started. <coughs> uh, we'll start by importing our usual libraries. And I'll just get them in here. Uh, let me just mark this down really quickly. Uh, you can see that we have um, pretty standard libraries, NumPy, Pandas, PyPl um, PyPlot, and for pre-processing we'll be using the standard scalar, label encoder, and train test split from sklearn. And you know, I actually realized we're probably not going to be using label encoder today, so that should be enough. <coughs> for our model we'll be using TensorFlow. Alright, so let's start by importing our data. So we'll use the read CSV function from pandas, and we'll get the file path right over here. Paste that in. Take a look at it. And let's just get some info on it. So we have 7,000 training examples and 21 columns, the last of which is our target column. And I noticed that there's actually some columns missing, so let's uh, enter this command which is pandas.setOption uh, max columns and we're going to set it to none. This way we'll see all the columns uh, in the data frame. <coughs> so alright, it looks like we have a good amount of uh, categorical features here. So we're going to do significant encoding and let's take a look at the null values. From the looks of this, there are no null values, right? Because there's 7,043 examples, and every one of these has 7,043 uh, non-nulls. So let's just, uh, just to double check, sanity check, we have, uh, yeah, no null values in any of the columns. And we can see there are a lot of object data types as well. So um, let's start, you know, I'll put it here, pre-processing. Alright, so before anything, notice this customer ID is not going to be helpful in predicting whether or not uh, the customer will churn or um, stop doing business. So let's drop that right off the bat. Data.drop. So data equals data.drop. Uh, it was customer ID. Let's grab that right there. And from the first axis. Alright, and uh, let's just take one more look at it down here. And I think we should start uh, encoding, because we don't have any problem with null values. Encoding. And we're going to write two functions. One will be uh, uh, get uniques, which will take in some data frame, and uh, a list of columns that we want to get the unique values for, and it's going to return a dictionary uh, that maps a column, the column name, to a list of the unique values in that column. Oh, notebook was disconnected. Don't worry about it. Oh, I can't type. What happened? Fatal. Can we restart it? Restart session. And let me just try refreshing the page. Weird, I've never had this happen before. Okay, looks like it saved okay. Alright, we're good. And we're going, so we're going to get this function get uniques. It's going to return, no, this is what I had before, it's going to return a dictionary that maps a column name to a list of the unique values in that column. And that's for each column in columns that we specified up here. And that's dictionary. Okay. And then we're going to make one more function, that's uh, get categoricals, or get categorical columns, we'll say. That's going to take in a data frame and we're going to return a list composing 
composed of all the columns. Um, uh, so for a col this is a column for column in df.columns. But the it will only be the columns where the data type of that column is object. So this will be uh, categorical columns, right? non-numerical columns. And um, from that, we can get the uniques uh, of our data, and we're going to pass in as the number of columns, uh, the list of columns that we want to get the unique values for will actually be get categorical columns of our data. All right. And data is not defined. Oh right, we did. We had to restart it. So, run before. And then, just importing. Just finish in a second. There we go. Okay. So, this is going is a dictionary that's mapping each column to a list of its unique values. So this is very useful for being able to visualize what kind of data we're working with. And uh, something I notice here is that this is actually a numerical column, right? So there's a problem here. Uh, it's, it's actually encoded as strings. These are considered strings, but they really should be numbers. So let's see what happens if we try to cast it as a float. Uh, data sub, what's the name? It's uh, total charges. Total charges dot as type numpy dot float. And we get a problem because there's something in here that isn't convertible. So let's take a look. Um, total charges dot unique. So this is the same as above, but we're going to sort it. So we can see if there's something above the uh, above or below the numbers that's giving us a problem. And sure enough, you can see there's a space in there. So a space is probably actually a null value, but it was not encoded as NAN, it was uh, um, entered as a space. So what we'll just do is data subtotal charges will be the same column, but we're going to replace a space with nothing. Actually, no, we'll, we'll replace it with a, uh, a null, null entry. Run that. Now, if we're going to check the null values, there's actually 11 null values in total charges. So with that, we can impute the, the missing values. So uh, we're just going to do this, put that in here. But now instead of, uh, so now what we'll do is we'll use fill na, which will fill any null values with a given value. And the value we're going to fill it with will be the mean of the column. All right. Oh, what happened? Oh, right. We have to cast it into an int uh, into a float first. So, do a subtotal charges. So I tried to compute the mean of a string, which doesn't make sense. So first, we make it into floats, and now we should fill it with uh, the proper data. And let's just put it all in the same block here. Now if we take a look at um, this, right? so we're going to take a look at the unique values in uh, the categorical features. You see that um, our total charges is no longer here. We fixed it, we've imputed the means, we're good to go. So now we have to deal with these. And what I like to do is um, split them into three kinds of features, which is binary features. So I'll make a list. Ordinal features. And nominal features. And basically, uh, we're going to encode these all differently. So, starting from the top, gender is going to go in the binary features, because there's only two values. Partner as well. What happened here? Oh. Okay. 
Um, dependence also. Uh oh, that's not a comma. Phone service. Aha, uh -huh. and we get to the next one and we notice another problem. As we can see, um, some of these are not binary, but they could be, right? No phone service and no is sort of answering the same question because this is saying if they have multiple lines or not. If they have zero lines, that's the same thing as not having multiple lines, right? So I think it's safe to convert this into a no value. So we, we're going to look at all those, uh, all of the columns that have the problem. So let's say, um, all right, let's just let's just write them down just so I can copy and paste them later. Uh, we're just going to get all these. These are the ones where we have this no internet access. And I'm just going to delete off the end. Like that. I can do this with. Okay. And then like that. Okay. So with these columns, what we're going to do is apply a lambda function that's going to convert these. Actually, we don't have to do lambda function, we just use replace. So data sub uh, multiple lines, right, dot replace. Uh, it's no phone service. And we're going to replace it with no. And that should look like this. So, um, oh right, uh, let me get the uniques of that. Now there's only two uniques. No phone service has just been converted to no, and we're good to go. Uh, but for the other ones, it's no internet service. So let me just uh, make th set that, and then we can get rid of this. And then all for all the rest, we're going to need to um, replace it with no internet service. So. For this one, it won't be multiple lines, and this will be internet. Now the columns we're going to use are these, so let me just make this into a list, and I'll just try to, first I'll put commas at the end of each of these, then, oh, not the end, then I'm just going to space, space, all right. I should do it. And then we have a list of all the ones we need. I'm just going to paste that in here. And then again in here. And I'll just format this a little better. So uh, right here. And right here. Okay, so not unique. Right, we're not getting the unique here. Oh no, did I, I replace this with unique? Did I? I don't think so. But let me just, just to be safe, I'll run before. <clears throat> okay, so this will replace uh, this one. All the no phone services will become no. And for all the rest, all the no internet services will become no. So run that, and we'll get the uniques again. And we can see now they are truly binary features. So let's put that in here. So multiple lines is going to be binary. Internet service, this is an interesting one. We could say this is ordinal because. Um, there's a clear distinction between these in an, in an order. Um, you could say that because fiber optic is just way faster than DSL, and DSL is much faster than no internet service, we can put them in an ordering. No DSL fiber optic. So no DSL. Oh, wait, sorry. Let me, uh, I have to make a new variable down here. I'll do it. We'll call it uh, internet ordering. No DSL fiber optic. And all right. That should be good. Okay, and then we have to put it in here, which will just be internet service. All right. Then we have online security. This is binary. Then we have online backup, also binary. 
Then device protection, also binary. A lot of binary features here. Tech support and streaming TV, also binary. Let me just reformat this. And streaming movies, also binary. Paperless billing, also binary. And you notice that churn is also binary, but it's not a feature. This is our label column. So at the bottom, let me just write target column churn. Okay. And then uh, the last one here, last uh, two here, are contract and payment method. And we see that a contract is also ordinal, right? Because we have this progression month to month, one year, two year. So down here, contract ordering is going to be month. Actually, it's the same order as this, so let me just paste that in. All right, and then contract will go in here. And then nominal features, which is just this one, payment method. All right, and now we fully uh, and the reason it's nominal, if you're not sure, is uh, because there's no order between them. Unique value, more than two unique values, but no distinguishable order. So uh, we have we have uh, defined our types of categorical features, and we've also specified orderings for the ordinal features. So now let's write three functions, one for each type of feature. So first, binary encode. And let me just uh, let me just um, write them all here. Ordinal encode and nom. Uh, we'll say one hot encode. All right. So for binary code, we're go encode. What we're going to do is this is a very simple one. First, first let's uh, say, okay, we have to give it a data frame, a column that we'd like to encode, and a positive value. Uh, this is the one will turn into one, and the other value will be turned to zero. So df equals df.copy, because we want to make sure we're not accidentally modifying a data frame in place. Uh, and then f with this data frame, we're going to get uh, apply a lambda function to the column we specified that will take in some x and return 1 if x is equal to the positive value and 0 otherwise. And when that's done, return df. That's it for binary encode, simple function. For ordinal encode, this one's going to take in a data frame, a column we'd like to encode and an ordering for that column, which we've specified here. And it's, uh, we're just going to make another copy, just in case. And then uh, this column, we're going to apply a different lambda function, which is going to uh, take in some x and return that x's index in the ordering. So uh, this will map to 0, this will map to 1, this will map to 2. Similarly up here, this will map to 0, this will map to 1, this will map to 2. Because we're indexing it in the ordering. And then return df when we're done. And then one, for one hot encoding, again we'll make a copy. And here we're going to make a dummies data frame with pandas.getDummies. This, uh, we'll, this will one hot encode it for us. And we have uh, we're going to encode uh, one hot encode. Well, let me just, in case you're not sure what du what uh, get dummies does. Let's, for example, let's use the nominal feature payment method and see what it gives us. It takes every unique value in payment method and it creates a new column for it. And then, if that is the value of an example, 
it will now have a 1 for that column and a 0 for all the others. So you can see uh, this one was electronic check, this one is mail check, this one is mail check. If we go back up here, you should be able to see electronic check, mail check, mail check. So uh, we're going to take that dummies thing, store it in dummies. And then we're going to concatenate two data frames. One will be the initial data frame, and one will be the dummies data frame. And we'll concatenate them side by side by specifying axis one. Then we're going to drop the original column from our data from our data frame, and then return. All right. So now we're ready to encode. We have our orderings. We have our functions. You can start. So first we'll do the binary encoding. And there's actually uh, many binary encoding columns, but they all have yes as the positive value, uh, except for gender, which has male. Male is positive just by convention. So um, data equals binary encode data. And the column we're going to do is gender and the positive label will be male. All right, then we're going to do the same thing for all the other columns, but we'll use a for loop here since, uh, let's see, since because um, they all have the same positive value. So for column in I should just copy this. Hmm. I could say in binary features. So for feature in binary features. Um, although that's going to mess with the one that we already encoded. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say, uh, let's just grab this, okay? We'll say uh, yes features. It's going to be that. So this is just binary features, but without the uh, without gender. So for feature in yes features, we will do binary encoding on that feature, but instead of male, we're using yes. All right. What's that? Okay. And now we're going to ordinal encode once for internet service and once for contract. So we actually data internet service and then we'll specify the ordering, internet ordering. And we'll do the same thing for a contract. We'll specify contract order. All right, and last, we just have to do nominal encoding, which is one hot encoding. Data equals one hot encode data payment method. All right. All right. If we run this, and actually, um, yeah, let's just run this. Oh, sorry, I did not. Wait. Oh, I didn't specify here. Data frame and a column. Okay. Oh, no. Hold on. I just have to rerun it. Okay. Now, if we look at our data, you can see everything has been encoded into numerical form except our churn column. That's going to be our target column. So, we could use sklearn's label encoder to do this. But since we already have this binary encode um, function, let's just use that. So data equals binary encode churn. Oh, I have to data churn and yes is the positive value. Run that. Uh, look at the data once again. Now, oh, what happened? Oh, we have. Let me uh, set the option again, because we re-ran it. 
max columns, none. All right, now we can see everything is really numerical form, including churn. And that's great, now we can split and scale our data. So Y is going to be our target column. That's just going to be, uh, it will be data sub churn. And then X is going to be everything except the target column. So drop churn from the first axis. I mean, the axis one. All right, then we're going to get a scalar. We'll use the standard scalar that we imported from sklearn. And X is going to be scalar.fittransform X. So we're just going to scale everything to have mean zero and variance one. Each column that is in X. All right, and then we're going to split X train, X test, Y train, Y test, train test split, X, Y, train size will specify as 70%. All right, now we can build a model. So training. We'll use a, uh, well first let's take a look at a few things. Our X looks like this. Uh, we'll do X.shape. We have 22 features and 7,000 examples. Our Y also uh, 7,000 examples but only one value, which is, will be our churn, yes or no, 0 or 1. And then let's look at the um, the sum of y will be the sum of all the 1s in y, right? because y looks like this, so if we sum across it, we'll get the total number of 1s, and if we divide that by the length, we'll get the percentage of 1s in the data. And we see that we actually have only 26% of the data is positively labeled. What does that mean? We have skewed classes, and we won't be able to use accuracy as our metric. Uh, so here we'll use the rock AUC score. And uh, let's create a TensorFlow model. Start building it. Uh, our input layer will be tf.keras.layers, not layers, uh, tf.keras.input. And the shape will be the number of features, which is just 22. Right, so a vector of length 22. Then our next layer will be tf.keras.layers.dense. We'll give it 64 activations and an activation function of ReLU, passing in inputs. Then we uh, do it once more, passing in X. And outputs will have tf.keras.layers.dense. Only one output with an activation sigmoid. And that's because the one output will be the probability value, the probability estimate for the positive class, which also implies the probability estimate of the negative class. We just do one minus. And then uh, model is going to be tf.keras.model. We pass in the inputs that we specified and the outputs that we specified. All right, then we'll compile the model. Uh, we'll use an atom optimizer and binary cross entropy as our loss. And then for metrics, we will use uh, the um, AUC, whose default curve is ROC curve, so we don't have to specify that, but we should specify the name, should be AUC. All right, then batch size, let's do 64. Number of epochs, we'll do 100. And then we'll store our model's history, our model's fit history in history. Model.fit, x train, y train, with a validation split of 20%, and the batch size and epochs as we specified. And uh, let's include a callback, uh, callbacks, tf.keras.callbacks, um, dot reduce learning rate on plateau. This will just help our model converge nicely. All right, 
So while that's training, uh, what's the problem? Input, input, x. Oh, we didn't pass in x here. Okay. All right, and I realized let's actually turn off verbose mode just to keep the notebook nice. Oops. All right. So while that trains, let's uh, plot the results. So uh, we'll make a standard training loss and validation loss plot. So plot.plt.figure, fig size of uh, 14 by 10. And then we'll specify in the, on the x-axis, we're going to make uh, this variable epochs range. We'll just be a range from one to the number of epochs plus one. Our train loss will be the history object. Well, history object has an attribute called history, which is just a list of um, all the, it's an array of all the lists uh, for each metric for and for each loss. So if we index it at loss, we'll get the array of losses over the epochs, which we can plot on the y-axis. And then uh, val loss will just be the same thing, but we'll index at val loss and we'll call this one val loss. All right, now we'll plot on the x-axis, the epochs range, and on the y-axis, the train loss. We'll give it a label, since we're doing two of them. Training loss. Then we'll do the same thing, but this will be, no, this will be val loss. And this will be validation loss. All right. Then we'll give it a title. Training and validation loss. We'll give it an X label of epoch and a Y label of loss. And we'll put we'll turn on the legend. Let's take a look. Alright, and it looks like our model converged um, here. Now I'm wondering, you notice that it actually had a lower validation accuracy before converging. So it found maybe not a global optimum. So let's try re um, training without the callback. The callback is what's given making it do this. The, the learning rate becomes so small that it can't bounce around and find other places. Uh, oh, when we retrain, and I don't think it should take too long. Oh, but let's look around the time. Looks like maybe 100 epochs is too long. Although it should be fine. Just a second. Yep, it's done. Now you can see, uh, instead of converging, it, it keeps going up. We can see it's clearly overfitting. But the minimum value is probably a very small number. We can get the, ap the actual minimum here by uh, numpy.argmin. Pass in the validation loss. And epoch 4. So why don't we train for 5 epochs? So same thing. Here we're training for 5. And now it converges very nicely. And we can evaluate our model on the test set, x test, y, y test. And we got an AUC of 0.83. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. Uh, I want to see, before we go any further, if we keep this to 50, and we're going to keep the callback, I want to see if our final test evaluation will be better. Uh, so we'll train, this time with a callback, we'll plot it when it's done, and then we will try evaluating right here, right? It's not really changing very much, so if we try it here, even though it was low over here, let's see how it does in the test set, and worse. So it looks like our original way was better. Let me get, that, get rid of that, and then train for five epochs. Take a look, and yeah, so we're at 0.8374, and that's a good place to stop. Um, I think that will wrap it up for today's video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell and leave a comment in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day.